Today we're going to take a look at the Big Tree Tech K-Touch, a touch screen you can use to control multiple clipper-based 3D printers. Hello everyone, Chris here. Big Tree Tech sent over the K-Touch screen for us to check out. It's a touch screen that you can use as sort of a remote control to control multiple clipper-based 3D printers. The biggest reason why I wanted to take a look at this screen is because many months ago we did a video where we took a Pi based screen from Big Tree Tech, loaded Clipper screen on it and added a battery so we could do essentially the same thing. Now the Clipper screen app has a lot of great features on it. It's an open source project that you can use on pretty much any Raspberry Pi. Now I wanted to see how the K-Touch was going to stack up because essentially it's doing the same thing. So let's just start by taking a look at what's in the box, and then we'll go over some of the features. So here's the K-Touch. It does have some of the features on the back here. 800 by 600 resolution, IPS full view, display colors, 16.7 million, 2.4 gig Wi-Fi, etc., etc. We have a little manual. We've got our screen. Of course you get a sticker. There's a duck hiding in the side box, USB cable, hex wrench, and a little mount. We'll unwrap the screen and of course take the plastic off. And then we'll just check it out. On the side here we do have a spot for a USB drive. On the back we have USB-C, we've got I squared C, and a power switch. It looks like you have off, battery power, or DC. And this back plate is just a mount that has magnets on it. You can remove that, mount this side, it has contacts on it so you can use that USB-C for charging it up. So as far as the hardware goes, pretty self-explanatory. And the first thing you'll notice if you buy one of these is you get a USB cable, but no charger. This is five volt, so I'm guessing they just intend for you to use something like a phone charger. Not a huge deal nowadays, probably for most folks, but just be aware of that if you're gonna get one of these. You'll have to find a power source. When we boot up, we get greeted with multiple languages. We'll go English, hit next. They have a QR code for the online manual, that's helpful. It wants us to select a Wi-Fi network. We'll pick ours, and then we'll punch in our password. We're connecting up, we grab an IP address, and we're ready to go to the next screen. Now we're ready to set up some printers, and remember, with this screen you're only going to be able to set up printers running Clipper. Now of course you can add these manually by punching in the IP address, but if you hit the plus sign down here to add a printer, you can go manually but it also has a scan, you can run it again up here with the refresh button, that will look for clipper-based printers on your network. So there's our Trident right there, we'll just tick it and hit OK. We've added it to the screen, now we can connect to it. So if you just click on it, it'll ask you if you want to connect, we'll hit OK. We're connected, we can hit Next. Now it's loading up the printer, so we can start controlling it. If you need to go to another printer or add another one, it's easy enough at any time just to go to printer selection, go through the same process, we'll just hit plus, we'll do a scan. It ran for about 30 or 40 seconds, but then it found the other one of the clipper printers I currently have turned on, our KLP1, there it is, hit OK, and we can connect to that one as well. Now that we're connected to that one, you can go back and now we're communicating with that printer. So far, it's working as advertised. You can connect to multiple clipper-based 3D printers. We'll continue to test it here in a moment on our Trident, but there is one thing we need to discuss about this screen. The Panda Touch screen that Big Tree Tech offers has been out for a while now. That's a screen that's intended to be an upgrade for your Bamboo Labs 3D printer. Some of those printers don't have a screen already, so this would be a nice add-on. That screen and this screen, hardware-wise, are exactly the same. You can flip out in between those two functionalities as you wish, you just have to flash a bin file to the screen. Now having said that, 
The Bamboo Labs printers might be a little tricky to deal with sometimes as far as integrating other devices, like this screen. They do a lot of firmware updates. It would be hard to keep up with them, I'm guessing. So the K-Touch has probably been released in this mode as a clipper screen, just so it has multiple uses. In the open source world here with Clipper and Clipper Screen, they're going to be able to do a lot more with this screen going forward. The K-Touch firmware is currently at version 1, but hopefully they add features down the way. So just something to keep in mind. Let's continue looking at the screen. So in general, the interface on the K-Touch is very simplistic. We have the printer selection option that takes you back to the previous screen. We've got our axes slash temp control. All the basic stuff is here. Home, left, right, front, back, all that good stuff. Extrude, anything you might need to control it, as well as disable steppers. It does have a leveling feature so that you can run your leveling options. So that would be nice if you're trying to set that first layer height. You have that Z-min, Z-max buttons there that you can adjust it. So that's good. And then in calibration, you do have a few things. You can check and stop status, PID tune, as well as a Z offset calibration. So that's going to run some commands in Clipper. They're very Clipper specific, but they're built in here so you can do that. That's also a nice feature. And then in settings, this is all the stuff for the screen. You can change the color up. You can check system info, screen timeout, language, brightness, Wi-Fi settings. Nothing special here, just stuff you might need to interact with the screen. And really the only other option you have is start printing. Now start printing takes a minute to load. It's loading the G code that's on the machine already. And there's a Benchy right there. That's the only G code I have loaded. But you can see how low quality that thumbnail is. You can barely even recognize what the print is. Just so happens we know a lot about Benchies. So that's a little lackluster. So that's pretty much all that you can do with the screen. It should get you by. You can start some prints. You can do some minor calibrations and movements. It'll be better than not having a screen at all. You can do multiple clipper printers, but again, not a lot here. The interface is very responsive and sleek. It looks really good. And the price is right at $60 US. One thing you also do want to keep in mind, since we're powering this up USB-C, it's got that power switch on the back. We're currently in five volt mode. If we were to switch it to battery, the Pi screen will have to reboot. Now the reboot is really fast, but you do have to do that. Now it's running in battery mode. You can take it off its dock, take it with you, go to the printer, walk around the house, whatever you feel like you need to do with your touch screen as a remote control. Then you can return it to the dock. You can go back to five volt mode DC mode. It does have to quickly reboot again just to do a refresh. But then if you were to take it off the dock, you would lose your power. It's no longer being powered because that switch is not in battery mode. You return it, the screen does come back up. So the power switch and how you interact with it is a bit of a turnoff. Now I understand why they do it. If you set it to the battery setting, it's continuously charging that battery and pulling energy from it. And if you've ever used a device like a cell phone where you're continuously charging it and utilizing it at the same time, those LiPo batteries can be just a little bit unpredictable. If you flip this device to a five volt DC mode, that setting you see on the back, the battery's completely out of the mix. But as you saw, you can't pull it off the dock and just use it. So dealing with that switch could be a bit of a headache. And continuing on with how you power the screen, if you're running Clipper in a traditional situation with a Raspberry Pi like I am on the Trident, I've got the screen plugged into a USB port on the Pi. It powers it just fine. Not every printer is going to be able to provide enough power from the USB port for this screen, but the Pi is handling it no problem at all. It is also worth mentioning that the USB port over here pretty much does nothing. It would be nice if you could load files on this, load these to the printer through the screen, but at this point, there's pretty much no use in using that drive over there at all. And if we're gonna make a video on this screen controlling a 3D printer, we should probably actually prove that it does that. So let's just jump into axes and temp, and we'll do a home. The printer's moving, it's doing its job. Just for fun, let's go ahead and do the leveling button. 
it's now building a bed mesh for the printer. So that's what that button's for. Remember, given the screen's simplicity, you don't have a console or access to any of the macros. This is all you get. But again, we can control the printer. So right out of the gate, the feature set on this screen isn't that great. It'll get you by, you can control your printer, but you can't deal with files, you can't see your camera feed. There's a lot of things that need to be implemented here. But on the plus side, it is only $60 US. The screen looks really good. It's nice and clean. It's a great interface. And the touch sensitivity is very accurate. So there are plus sides. We just need to get a few more firmware updates to get the features that we want to use. And having said that, uploading the firmware to it is very easy. Big Tree Tech already has the GitHub set up where they're going to be putting all their firmware updates so you can go out here and grab them. And if you navigate to the IP of your K-Touch screen, there's an interface here where you can upload the firmware and update it right on the fly. No issues transferring files to an SD card or a USB drive to flash it. You can do it all right here. And if you go to that QR code in the system's info on the screen, it's going to take you to this wiki page. There is some good information out here. I didn't mention battery life of the screen, but it really only is about 20 or 30 minutes if you're using it as a remote. So keep that in mind. It does say that you can add up to 50 printers on one single screen. So that's pretty impressive. But with the feature set, probably not that useful. And it does state if you have more than 50 G-code files, it may run out of memory because of the thumbnails. Hopefully they improve that as well. Now, it might seem like there's a lot of downsides to what I'm saying about this screen. I do love Big Tree Tech. I think they do a pretty good job overall. But to give you one highlight of this video, as I was scrolling through this wiki, they have a packing list and they list the Big Tree Tech duck one piece. There's just something about that that I really love. The Big Tree Tech K-Touch screen is a fun little device you can add to your 3D printer at a very low cost. Now the feature set is not rich at all. It does get the job done. You can control your 3D printer. You can control multiple Clipper 3D printers, but it doesn't do all the stuff that Clipper screen would. But on the flip side of that, if you built a Clipper screen like I've shown in previous videos, it would cost a lot more than this screen does. And this screen, just to add features to it, it's just a firmware flash away. And I'm sure Big Tree Tech is already working on that, taking all the ideas that you have for features that you want and rolling it into firmware that we're going to enjoy really soon. And on top of that, it's very easy to go to a new firmware version if you want to. So hopefully you found this helpful. That's it for today. And I'll see you really soon on the next one.